This is a demonstration of a wireless infrared serial bootloader implemented for the RP2040. What we're looking at here is two Raspberry Pi Picos. The one on the right here is the one that's going to transmit a new program to the one on the left, which will receive that program and begin executing it. I have this Raspberry Pi Pico on the left pro or, uh, powered off of a battery pack just to illustrate that it is indeed fully independent. Um, the mechanism by which the program gets from this Pico to this Pico is this infrared LED and this associated infrared receiver. And in fact, each of these Picos has a, an LED and a receiver because there's handshaking that occurs as the program is being uploaded. So if I want to upload a program, the way that I do it is I can write some program. So I have an example here that's just going to blink an LED off for a second and then on for a second over and over again. And I build it. It's worth mentioning, I suppose, that I'm, I'm building this using a uh, custom linker script. Custom linker script shown here. Um, that puts it as, at a specific place in flash memory so that both the bootloader and the application code can exist in different places in flash, in flash memory and not overwrite one another. But in any case, we build this, and then I can run a Python program that will start blinking this LED in order to send the data over to this receiver and ultimately into the flash memory of this Pico to be executed. So I'll run this Python script, and as it's running, we can notice a couple things. The first is, the LED on this Pico has started blinking. The bootloader, bootloader is configured to flash the LED every time it receives a new hex line. What I mean by a hex line is when we compile this program, the compiler generates a whole bunch of files. Included among the files that get generated is a .hex file. And this specifies the application code in hexadecimal format. So what this Python script is doing essentially is just going through this hex file line by line and shuffling it over this infrared link to this Pico over here, which stores it in flash memory. And then once the whole thing has been received, it starts executing it. So you can see that we're at about 80% uploaded at this point. I'm just going to let this finish. And then there are a couple of other features of this that I want to illustrate. So that's finished uploading, and what we see now is that the program that we were just looking at is now running on this Pico. In particular, that LED is blinking on for a second and then off for a second over and over again. So now we have a valid application in flash memory on this Pico. If I remove power from this Pico and then put power back on, it notices that it has a valid application and just automatically starts executing it. If we want to load a new application onto this Pico, that is to say we want to get back into bootloader mode, there are a couple of ways that we can do it. One is I could hold down this button and remove power and add power. And when the Pico powers back on, it will notice that that button's pushed and go into bootloader mode. Um, or alternatively, I can just start sending a new program with this Python script and it'll automatically go into bootloader mode and load it. So to illustrate how that works, let's just change the program a little bit. So instead of turning off for a second and on for a second, let's have it blink faster. And we'll save that and build it. When we build this, a new hex file gets generated. And now we're going to load that new hex file from this Pico to this one through that infrared link. I'll just start doing that now. And you can see that it's blinking again, indicating that it's now receiving that new program. Um, as this is loading, I, I can talk a little bit about these infrared LEDs and infrared receivers. The infrared receiver that I'm using is the, I'll just pull the data sheet over here. It's this one. The TSOP, and I'm using specifically the um, 56 kilohertz variety, the TSOP34156. So what this infrared receiver does is it receives and demodulates flashing infrared of a specific frequency. This particular receiver is tuned to 56 kilohertz. And so the way that I'm implementing this connection is each of these LEDs is connected to a PWM output from its associated Pico. 
this program's almost finished. I'll just point out that this has finished loading, and now this, this new application is now running that's blinking the LED a little bit faster. Um, but in any case, each of these LEDs is hooked up to the, a PWM output of its associated Pico. That PWM output is driving the LED at 56 kilohertz, but the low side of that LED is connected to a PNP transistor, the base of which is driven by the UART transmit line from the associated Pico. So what this essentially means is that when we do a, a UART transaction, that UART transaction is modulating the 56 kilohertz LED on and off. That flashing on and off 56 kilohertz LED is received by the other infrared receiver and interpreted as data, which then gets stored. And that goes both directions. So this Pico sends this Pico the data. This Pico verifies the checksum of that data and sends an acknowledgement back to this one so that if it receives a bad line, it can ask to get that line again. Um, so we now have a new program loaded on this Pico. Um, as before, if I remove power and then add power, it automatically starts executing that new program that we just loaded. Um, real quickly, I suppose, just to illustrate that this is indeed being loaded by infrared, I'm going to start loading it again. And if I put my hand between here, so I'll just slide my hand between the transmitter and receiver, we will see the transaction stop. So the LED has stopped flashing to indicate that it stopped receiving data. And you can see that our progress over here has stopped at 